Welcome, everybody, to Crystal Kyle and Friends. Today, we're going to be talking to Katie Rader of Jacobin. Uh, there was a phenomenal new study that just came out from Jacobin, YouGov, and the Center for Working Class Politics. Uh, and they basically titled the study, Kyle Kalinske and Crystal Ball are right about everything. <laughs> the, uh, I'm, I'm not even really the kidding. The case for Bernie 2024. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's basically about how progressive populism is, empirically speaking, the most popular message and the easiest way to win an election. And they compared that up against... They compared it against... Okay, so here were your four quadrants. You had your populist progressive... You had your woke moderate, which was the worst. Mm -hmm. You had your woke progressive. And then you also had your sort of moderate, like Joe Biden type. So and there, you had a Republican. Too. And you also had a Republican. Republican so the, yeah. the politicians, they modeled this after. The progressive populist was Bernie. Um, he's like the only one that even falls in that category, which is sad, which is something we can talk about. Um, the woke progressive was AOC and Ayanna Presley, kind of modeled after their language. The woke moderates were like Beto and Kamala. Mm -hmm. And then the moderate centrist, I don't know what they called a moderate something, um, was like a Joe Biden type candidate. Right. Yeah. So those those were their buckets. Yeah. So, you know, look, I, what I love about this is it's all empirical now. It's all data driven. Mm -hmm. And who are they talking to? They're talking to people who are Democratic voters. They're talking to independents. And they threw in a, a few conservatives, right? Yeah, so they wanted to use a pool. These were all working class voters. So all working whole, class. Whole the whole idea thing. here right. is, you know, people who are in the working multiracial working class in swing states. In swing who states, are that's huge. Even remotely gettable by the Democratic Party. Right. So people who were just hardcore, hardcore right wing partisans gone. The TFG listening to Rush gone. Limbaugh, yeah. those people, you know, rest in peace, Rush, I guess, or whatever. Anyway, whatever you want to say about Rush. Rest anyway, rest listening, used to listen to. <laughs> to Rush Limbaugh, um, watching Fox News all day, those people were left out. Right. It was just people who were even potentially winnable. And lo and behold, so, progressive populist messaging wins out, and it's not particularly close. Yeah, so anyway, we're going to have a fantastic conversation about that. I'm really looking forward to it. I love when I'm told how right I am all the time. <laughs> um, but before, before we get into that, there's a couple things I want to talk about. Chris Christie and Donald Trump are going at it. Yeah, this is a fun one. A battle of the bloated, is what <laughs> I like to call it. <laughs> battle of the bulbous. <laughs> battle of the beluga whales. Anyway, uh, sorry, these are fat jokes. I'm not allowed to make them. Um, well, I'm a little, I got a, I got a belly. Right? A little pudger? You're good. Well, I know, but I'm saying as long as you got you're a little good. bit of a pudger, you're good. You think that gives you license? Yeah. Okay. All right, we'll go yeah. with it. I got a broken leg. Everybody give me a, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> it's not broken. It's the calf. Calf is torn. Anyway. Uh, so Chris Christie w basically went out there and said, all right, enough with the shit. The 2020 election's over and done. Joe Biden won. Get over it. www.getoverit.net. That's what Chris Christie said. And uh, so, of course, Trump catches wind of this, and Trump releases a statement, which, by the way, his statements are now, like, nearly impossible to find online. Yeah. They're fucking hiding those shits. Yeah, they Like, are. I get it. You guys sort of deplatformed him from 70 different places, but I should, if I'm looking for the former president of the United States statement, his own shit, I should be able to find it. It's nearly impossible to find it. Anyway. Um, and he basically says, like, nobody wants to hear from you. I re I honestly thought he was going to hit him with some, like, open Some kind top. of fat joke thing. Right. He yeah. didn't. I was like, oh, you, he's losing a step. Donald Trump's classier than you are, Kyle. No, we'll he's, he's lost a step. He's less entertaining <laughs> than I am now. That's the difference. Uh, I wish he said something like that. Anyway, so um, he uh, the hardest line in, in Trump's response was, like, when Chris Christie left office, he had a 9% approval rating. Nobody wants to hear from you. And when I read that, I was like, oh, snap, son, 9%? That's pretty bad. Now, just for the record, I didn't look this up. I don't know if you want to look it up as I'm talking I'll right now. Up. But he may have made that shit up. Yeah. Because, <laughs> seriously. Because I know I remember when George W. Bush and Dick Cheney left office, it was a huge deal that they were in the 20-something percent. Like somebody was at 21%, somebody was at 29%, and everybody looked at that like, that's the saddest thing I've ever seen in my life. And by the way, Kamala right now is 28%. All right. I'm not seeing nine, but I am seeing 15. Okay. So Trump exaggerating, of course, but not by much. Uh, so either way, hilarious. Um, but then Chris Christie 
yet again. And by the way, I think he's posturing for a 2024 run, don't mm-hmm. you? That seems to be the, the Nikki read. Haley, Nikki Haley came out and gave a speech and attacked all the other Republicans. I'm not kidding, for being socialist light. <laughs> She gave a speech saying all the other Republicans are socialist light, and except me, Nikki Haley, I'm the true oh, capitalist. She's the or worst. Oh, she's and she's the worst. and she has the personality of oatmeal. Like you're not going anywhere. Relax. Anti charisma. Yeah, but the elite love her. The donor the class loves her. Love oh my her. god, I know. Yeah. Think, oh my god, she's a woman and maybe slightly. She's of color. like the Kamala so, Harris of Rep- of the Republican Party. Nailed it. Yeah. Exactly right. Exactly right. So um, Chris Christie responds to Trump because now, well, Chris Christie learned after the Marco Rubio back and forth in the um, twenty six was twenty sixteen. Yes. I think, yeah, 2016 primary, when Chris Christie buried Marco Rubio, when he finally let himself go, like, he was sort of holding back because of the staffers. Christie was too buttoned up for most of the primary. And then finally, when he realized he had no more shot, he's like, fuck it, I'm just going to start throwing haymakers. And when he started doing that, everybody liked him. And he buried Marco Rubio. And so I think Chris Christie learned that lesson now. And he's like, if I'm going to run again, I better start throwing my haymakers now. So what's Christie doing? Now he's not backing down anymore. So Trump says the thing about 9%. And Christie fires back and says, I love this because it's so passive aggressive. He says, like, I'm not going to get in the back and forth with Donald Trump. And then he goes on to get in the back and forth with Donald Trump. But, and he says, yeah. <laughs> but what I will say is this. When I ran for re-election in 2013, I got 60% of the vote. When he ran for re-election, he lost to Joe Biden. So I'm happy to have that comparison stand up because that's the only thing that really matters. Or that's the, that's the one that really matters. It's a pretty good point. See, this is the problem. Like, Trump, Trump was able to become Trump because he's so bra- uh, brash and abrasive. And yeah. He would just say shit. Yeah. But he's also an idiot. Whereas Chris Christie can be brash and abrasive, and he's not as dumb as Trump. He's still dumb, but he's not as dumb as Trump. Yeah. Um, I've always thought Chris Christie, I find his politics abhorrent. He, oh, of course, became popular in New Jersey by basically like yelling at teachers <laughs> and crusading against unions. He's terrible. Um, so obviously his politics are terrible. I've always thought he was very politically talented. And one of the more uh, talented politicians on the Republican side. I think if he had, remember there was a whole like effort to pull him into the 2012 primary, Republican primary that ended up being Mitt Romney, who was like cartoonishly out of touch and, you know, the trees are the right height and all that stuff. (laughs) The trees are the right height. (laughs) Binders full of women. Um, We had binders full of women. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I think if Christie had jumped into that primary number one i think he would have won and number two i think he would have been a much more formidable opponent against obama and could have ended up potentially as president because i do think he is a skilled politician he's very quick on his feet he's very he's got a big presence i'm not that's (laughs) i didn't even mean to say i really mean he's got like i was the one making the fat jokes he's (laughs) he's got a lot of charisma um is what i'm trying to say here uh so anyway But I felt like in 2016, when he jumped into that Republican primary and did that moment with Marco Rubio, I could watch it on a loop so many times. It's so satisfying to watch him just call out Marco and make him look like a total idiot. But I felt like Trump kind of blocked his lane because that's right because trump could out brash and out brazen and out bully and out like Christy ridiculous was ruined by the consultants everybody he was ruined by the consultants so i didn't really think that he came off as any different i just thought that trump was more of what his lane had been so if christie was like you know a nine on the brazen brash whatever oh, he was a two on that shit at the beginning of the primary really are you kidding me go back and watch he was clearly told by the consultants you need you to tell it down. people you got to reel it in you got to be a politician and he took that shit to heart and he listened to them and he realized at the end that they failed me yeah because christie was the original trump christie was the original guy who would just go around right. yelling at people and I saying think, wherever the fuck he and wanted. i think that and people loved that i they mean did. i mean that's why he won all the time he won big in new jersey when he collapsed and new jersey obviously it's a blue state it's hard to win as a republican what he collapsed over was the whole bridgegate thing and that was a total, See, total mess and disaster for him. Christie's problem was with the hardcore Republican base, too, because he remember when it was one of the hurricanes, maybe it hurricane Sandy. He hugged, he hugged Obama, Obama and they made a huge deal on that yeah. right wing radio went after him for a well, long they, time. They thought that he gave Obama that election. With that hug. That's right. So they, they blamed they him for that They blamed shit. him for Obama winning but a second term. What Christie didn't realize is you could have won back the Republican base by out-alpha mailing everybody on stage, which yes. is what Trump did. Trump out alpha everybody on stage, and they were all like, ooh, I like this guy. Yeah. If Christie just did that shit, they would have liked him more. Yeah, but I guess I would. what I would say about this like Christie versus Trump thing is that ship has kind of sailed. I mean, Trump owns a party now, and so I don't think— 
that it will ultimately work for Christie if his strategy is to be like going up directly against Trump. But okay. if Trump runs in the Dem in the pr Republican primary, he is going to win. I don't think there's any way around that. If he doesn't run, you're going to want to be endorsed by him. And probably the smartest thing to do in terms of ultimately winning a general election is to walk the Glenn Youngkin line and, you know, kind of hand the, like arm length distance. That's but the other problem, not with reject. The other problem with Christie is he has now internalized the mainstream media narrative and the mainstream media narrative across the board is that like. Trump is toxic. Trump is terrible. January 20th or January 6th, excuse me, um, you know, stop the steal stuff. Crazy, 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 crazy. And he's now internalized that. So I think he he's in too many green rooms now. Well, right. So he yeah. incorrectly feels like, oh, I'm just saying the thing that everybody believes. But it's like, actually, no, the base, of, which are the people you have to appeal to, to some extent, believe all that shit. So what? So the person right. who's the model, like you said, is Yunkin, where what Yunkin did, which was very masterful as a politician, is he walked that fine line between not being a Trump sycophant, but not being anti-Trump. And so what he did is, for example, he didn't want Trump to campaign with him in Virginia. Right. There was a story about it. he didn't want him to campaign with him, which was actually intelligent. Looking and back I think at it. Trump... It ended up being pretty close. I think if Trump I had campaigned for him, I think he would have lost. I think lost. he would have lost because the suburbs were really big in handing it over to Yunkin. So, yeah. And he didn't talk about immigration at all, even with the mess at the border. He didn't uh, have Trump come talk for him. But he did get every now and then he would give a little head fake or give a little wink or a nod to the Trump people. Yeah, he'd, you know? he'd do like, we need electoral fr he would talk about like election fraud right, and stuff our like that yeah. yeah and they were but like never, oh okay yeah we see us, what right? you mean yeah. we see what you mean exactly and and you know it was a real question whether he'd be able to pull that off for the entire election i think the fact that he hadn't been in elected office before so he hadn't had to stake out any positions for or against trump also made it easier for him to be able to walk that line but I mean, first of all, I personally think Trump is going to run again. Um, and if he does, like I said, he will be the nominee. I just can't, you know, I just can't see anyone else being able well, to take that from him. Let me say this. First of all, it is a big if if he can run again because he's about a thousand years old and he's not the healthiest person. He's got a healthy diet, right? Yeah. A lot of exercise. Well. Three Big Macs a day. Um, <laughs> but the other thing is it's not like there aren't people waiting in the wings who have talent. DeSantis is can be viable he can, and and he is another one who does i mean he's terrible but i do think he has political talent and i'll say this i even think if, if trump's not running i mm -hmm. think it mostly comes down to desantis or pence yeah yeah i don't think pence is particularly politically talented personally but i think desantis probably has more of a read on it but then again i mean it just depends on how things shake out with trump and who he decides he wants to back because i do think that'll be a huge factor mm-hmm yeah, I mean, he does want to run, though. There's no doubt about that. I think that's obvious. I mean, the Republican base was running around the Capitol not long ago. Like, not the base. Some people, a fringe, running around the Capitol recently saying they want to hang Mike Pence. So I do think that that's an obstacle for him to getting the Republican nomination. No. No, I don't think so. You think they'll get over that? It's not that they'll get over that. It's that the national uh, psyche is like goes like two and a half minutes back. You know? Like, by, by 2024? Republicans would be like, what even January? What was even January 6th? Did something happen then? What are you talking about? Mm, I don't know about that. I'm, They're holding on to this one really hard. I'm but telling you, Mike Pence still. I do think, though, your point about Christie and the media and how he's kind of internalized their thinking and their read on the Republican base is an apt one because he his first comment was about we need to stop relitigating this last election. And he got all kinds of media praise and right. love and attention over that and so i think he felt rewarded for making those comments distancing himself from trump and that's why he's now leaning into this and maybe he doesn't want to run maybe he just wants attention and if he wants to do that and he wants a like highly paid another highly paid media gig this is a good path to that and he also has a personal grudge against trump because i think trump to the very last minute was considering christie for a high position in the administration and then he fucked him on it yeah, but Christie was with Trump all the way through. I mean, he advised him for his debates and all of that. No, I mean, but there was, was a falling out at some through. point. When Trump didn't pick him to be in the administration, they were... They were well, that, and that was all Jared Kushner because of the bad the Kushner, cause, blood. Because Christie, Christie put Christie Kushner's dad, dad yeah. in prison. So That's what's up, Christie. That was... What <laughs> Best thing you ever did. <laughs> that was... <laughs> a fucking well, little weasel. You know, Jared had a little bit of a, an act to grind there. Yeah, and he had a crime um, family. And reportedly, he kept Christie out of the administration, but apparently they forgave and forgot or whatever between Trump and Christie because he was back advising him all the way up until pretty recently.